is equity news on equity access, your cross section of the stock markets and of developments in the Zimbabwean economy. A fantastic evening it is to you. I'm Ibn Nabunda. Let's get started. Our news tonight Finance Minister Professor Mutulin Nube said that $7.5 million has traded on the interbank forex market. This he said in an interview with Bloomberg while on a trip to the United States. He also said that um, government would allow market forces to play on the market in that foreign um, market exchange. He also said that there would be transparency to allow for the foreign exchange market to go forward. Well, let's have a listen. Oh, the, the, the last week we traded 7.5 uh, uh, million roundabout there. Uh, this was just the beginning. Uh, I remember that for the last 10 years, Zimbabwe has had a fixed uh, currency regime, one to one to the US dollar. Uh, and so the, the, the trading has started. It can only get better. We're also trying to improve the market microstructure and the architecture mm -hmm. of that market. And we'll see it improve quite a bit over time and begin to, to fluctuate properly. It has allowed us to also introduce proper monetary policy. Uh, uh, interest rate right. policy, we are, we are moving, we we'll, we'll start with, for instance, targeting uh, reserve money or high-powered money, a growth of about 10%, uh, and then so, eventually so Minister, move towards so, inflation targeting. Yeah. Minister, so I get it correctly, so you're saying that the government will disclose the volume of trading in this new currency? Oh, oh, absolutely. We have to disclose that because that's the key to the understanding of the market microstructure. But also government will not be uh, participating in the market itself. We want to allow the market to participate. We should stay out of the market. We will stay out. Otherwise, we yep. will distort the market. The minister also said that government is working on a set of policies that will allow foreign mining companies to own as much as 100% up from the 49%, which is currently prevalent. Let's have a look. Or you, you can own 100 percent of the, the, the any mining investment, any investment in Zimbabwe. That's what is coming through. We're removing that indigenization rule, which is discouraging foreign direct investment. Our Zimbabwe is open for business. It can only be open if you're allowed to own 100 percent of investment as a foreign investor. Well, plus, the World Platinum Investment Council today released global platinum stats for the last quarter of 2018, thereby giving a comprehensive report of the global performance in as far as platinum production is concerned for the full year. Well, Zimbabwe's platinum production declined by um, 2% to 470,000 ounces from 480,000 recorded in the previous year. This would be in line with the global trend as there was a marginal decline in global output to um, 8 million ounces. Output from Zimbabwe and Russia is expected to remain static at 470,000 and 670,000 ounces for Zimbabwe and Russia, respectively. Likewise, global platinum demand dropped uh, as a result of declines in automotive jewelry as well as investment demand. Platinum demand has been under pressure since 2015 when Volkswagen was involved in a diesel engine emissions cheating scandal in the United States. Well, the World Platinum Investment Council said automatic demand is projected to fall at a far slower rate in 2019 at a rate of 3%, unlike the 7% recorded in the year 2018. Zimbabwe is home to the world's second largest platinum reserves behind South Africa. And London-listed miner Vast Resources said it has raised £825,000 towards investment in Zimbabwe as well as Romania. This was done through, of course, a share issue. Vast added that proceeds will go towards um, corporate purposes as well as operations in Marange in Zimbabwe as well as at a polymetallic mine in Romania. Vast has in as interest in a number of projects in Zimbabwe, including a 25% controlling interest in Pickstone PLS Gold Mine, a 23% um, economic interest in the Eureka Gold Mine, and an 87% interest in a diamond concession with uh, Marange um, in Marange Diamond Fields. As well, it's reporting season for many ZSE listed companies, but for now it appears that many companies will have to extend their reporting dates as a result 
of the currency reforms introduced by um, Dr. Mangunjika in the monetary policy statement issued earlier this year. During the presentation of the MPS, two key um, pronouncements were made. Firstly, that the RTGS balances as well as the bond notes and coins are to be denominated as RTGS dollars. Meanwhile, liberalizing the exchange rate between the RTGS dollar as well as other currencies. Government has thus far gazetted statutory instrument 33 of 2019 to give the shadow currency uh, um, the RTGS dollar a legal standing. Effectively, companies need a new guidance framework um, from the public accounts and auditors board before going forward to announce their financial results under the new currency setup. AgroConcern TSL has set precedence by extending the period for the presentation of their financials, which um, should have been released already. Well, the crafting of the new PAAB guidelines in essence involves several key players, including the Central Bank, um, the Insurance and Pension Funds Commission, the ZSE, as well as the, the SEC. For a conversation on these and other issues, I'm joined in studio by our resident chief analyst, Respect Gwenzi. Respect, good evening and welcome to the show. My pleasure. Thank you, Ibn. Splendid. Uh, let's get the ball rolling. Sure. Well, the finance minister is in the United States. Yeah. And um, he's been in an interview with Bloomberg and quizzed uh, about several issues with regards to the economy. Sure. And one of the things that he said um, in his responses was that $7.5 million has traded, has been traded on the interbank market, uh, forex market thus far, against, a, against an injection by government of $20 million. What does this figure indicate at this point? If we want to be technical about the figure, I think uh, we need to look at... Uh, what Zimbabwe demands in terms of uh, imports per particular day, and that figure sits at something like 19 million a day. And uh, if you are then saying we have traded 7 million in about one and a half weeks since the promo, since the 25th, so between the 25th and today, maybe the actual trading days would come in at uh, would come in at about seven days. So we have actually been spending a million or, or we have, there's been a trade of at least a million dollars a day, whereas uh, the import demand for Zimbabwe currently stands at 19. So that, that, that big disparity shows you that there hasn't been much uh, to talk about on the interbank trade and there hasn't been uh, real flows to satisfy the actual demand that demand Zimbabwe has. Because if you're looking at the 2018 figures, you get that deduction of, uh, I mean, coming from 5.9 billion for the whole year, you, you break it down to about 19 million. And if we, even if we assume that half of that is uh, due from is, is, is government funded imports, if we even reduce that figure to about 8.5, uh, it's, it's still huge per day. To, to, if you then equate, equate it with about uh, with the figure, with the current trading figures of 1 million. So I don't think. Uh, the forex trading platform has yet uh, established parity because clearly from the demand side it should be more than uh, it should be more than uh, the current uh, one million that government has uh, that that Mutuli is saying has been traded traded a day since the 25th. Okay, I think I think that that's a wide margin considering what we actually demand. But what then would that spell out? Does that spell out? Uh, perhaps engagement on the on the black market or what or or, or uh, perhaps companies have stopped you know uh, importing or try or they're trying to make sense of the situation i don't think there are funds on the market uh, of course we we are told that there are 20 there's 20 million that has already been allocated uh to the interbank market but if you are to look at an average the average that he has given it really shows that uh there hasn't been supply because at 2.5 definitely there are people who need that cash we wouldn't be seeing the uh, alternative market uh, trading at, uh, at, the, at the rates that uh, that are uh, as high as uh, as high as three as high as three point uh, as high as three 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 fifty. If you look at this figure at at, at three fifty and you compare it to the to three to the two hundred and fifty 
uh, that's prevailing on the interbank market, it's still a huge margin. So what I'm trying to say is, if there was that flaws, if there were those flaws on the interbank market, we would definitely be not seeing a, a higher uh, black market rate, which is which presently sits at about 3.55 compared to 2.55 on the interbank market. So are we then suggesting that people are simply foregoing uh, cheap money on the on the interbank market? There is not such a, there's no real money. There's no such supply on the on the on the on the interbank market is purported by government. So we are yet to really see uh, uh, how this market performs in terms of uh, uh, bids and 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 and, uh, and and offers. So I don't think presently there is supply to satisfy demand, and that figure really shows us that there's a serious concern. Okay, but are we are we to expect um, perhaps a different trend going forward? Because from what we're seeing, it seems as though there's none, there's nothing concrete on the ground to actually allow or facilitate, you know, trade in that sense. So uh, perhaps could we be dealing with a situation of um, too many regulations or too many hands by government actually affecting the flow of trade there? I don't think it's. Uh, I don't. Yeah, maybe if you say that there control, is a manipulation, so yeah, because private players have not yet started uh, playing in that market. Why am I saying so? Because private players coming in from the supply side, it means flows should have now been exceeding 20 million. We should have seen trades which are beyond the initial outlay which was done by government. So the variance still between 20 and 7 is, is also not uh, reconcilable. I think at this point we should have uh, seen trades which are far much exceeding the 20 million that, is, that was said by uh, that was said to have been injected by the central bank, but it's still it's still ten days of trading. So maybe we are yet to see uh, companies after fully restructuring, they might start to move some of their flows. But at present moment, all that that's being said is not really giving a, a good picture of how the interbank market is uh, is performing. Because there has been a significant backlog. There are many who have been crying to have the market deregulated. They were crying to have the exchange rate uh, floated and now it is floated we should have seen a slight uh, spike in uh, in fact an initial spike in demand and that should have uh, actually pushed the number of trades and that uh, 20 million by now should have been exhausted but uh, now not. now the clock is ticking and corporates have were forced through the system that they must spend their forex within a 30 day period um, so could we possibly see an, in, an, an an increasing trend or increased play in the market as, as the days progress leading up to that 30-day mark? Yeah, but uh, there is still engagement. I think uh, in the past months we've seen policies being uh, reversed, some being refined. You remember the 2% tax when it was introduced and it was later refined to say we're exempting A, B or C. Uh, there's been an outcry within the uh, corporate body to say some of these are uh, the, the, the taxation, I mean the, the, the level at which the 30-day period moratorium is just too thin. Some have got 60-day uh, uh, cycles to, 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 to pay their creditors uh, or to source their inputs from outside and they might need uh, to retain certain funds for a longer period. So it's not about utilizing within 30 days. What if your cycle says it's a 90-day uh, credit uh, delivery or delivery of your, of your inputs from outside? So your receipt will get processed within between 30 and 60 days. So it just depends with the nature of the business. So government will have to uh, get back to liars with, the, with some of those uh, disgruntled uh, persons. But likewise, um, I believe uh, we are likely to see, obviously, a, a movement in the next few weeks as uh, we near uh, the end of month uh, period uh, where people with excess monies will have to play or rather let that money, I mean, uh, or let uh, the central bank uh, take that money and place it on the, on the, on the interbank market at the prevailing 2.5% uh, 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 exchange rate. So I think, like you said, there might be a, a, a movement. Okay. Um, on to another issue that the minister did make mention of. Um, he said that government is in the process of uh, putting up a policy that allows um, foreign companies to actually um, mine uh, with a, a controlling stake of 
even 100%. Currently, we're at 49%. What could be the implications of that? Obviously, this would um, uh, encourage foreign investors. Your take? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think uh, there has been an outcry over the past years in terms of how government has been managing the indigenization policy. But uh, the real issue with indigenization was the failure or the lack of consistency with regards to real policy promulgations. Government would today say this and they will change that tomorrow. So if there is a lack of consistency within a certain policy measure, it fails to hold and investors are caught off guard and they won't play in that space. So investors want, want to know that uh, their investment is, is protected. But in terms of picking the mining sector particularly, uh, for exemption from the indigenization sector, uh, from the indigenization policy. I wouldn't think that that's the best uh, idea or the best uh, strategy Zimbabwe could have uh, implemented. Wow. Uh, there are other countries. In other countries, uh, presently, they are instituting uh, similar measures where you, you, a foreigner will have to tax certain percentage and uh, locals will also have to tax certain percentages. But uh, I, I believe the nature of uh, mining itself uh, requires significant capital outlays. And sometimes it's, it's very difficult to pick a local player who has got clout. You, you can't just come and give uh, 10 million to, to a local player. I mean, it's, 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 not, it's, not, uh, it's not feasible. So I think that's, that's what informed the, uh, the scrapping of the indigenization law. Okay. So we, we, we may see... Uh, going forward, um, I mean, if other factors are, are, are sorted out right, we might see uh, more investors coming to Zim and, uh, of course, uh, mining, the mining sector growing. Um, my take would be, well, according to several reports, Zimbabwe is one of the worst places to do mining. Um, and uh, uh, for, the, for what reason? Um, at, at the core of that would be issues to do with indigenization policy. Remember, in 2015-2016, um, President Mugabe came up with a policy that seized uh, mining uh, concessions from um, international players. So I think with this move now um, of us taking that initiative to increase that shareholding for 49%, although I, I would not exactly agree with 100%, I think would find ourselves vulnerable at the hands of uh, players like the Chinese and the like. I think perhaps we, we, it's, it's something that would need to be, need to be revised. It's, it's, it is not yet, uh, you know, reached implementation stage. I think there's, no, there's a lack of emphasis on what the problem was with indigenization. The problem with indigenization was, that, was not that the shareholding structures were not okay. It was the inconsistency where government comes in today and says, uh, from your hundred percent, we are taking this much. Oh, and, and tomorrow they change to say, okay, fine, you are you are taking everything. So investors want uh, that kind of assurance to say our investments is secure. You won't wake up tomorrow telling us that you now own hundred percent. It's not like they want hundred percent or they want they want consistency. Right. If if it's fifty, it's gonna be fifty. It's it's everywhere. For example, if you look at Saudi Arabia, it 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 holds the largest. Uh, in fact, one of the, la the largest companies in the world. It's just that it's not listed as yet. But if you look at Aramco, which is the uh, which is an oil producing company, it 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 has that kind of shareholding where the Americans hold a certain percentage and the Saudi Arabians hold uh, uh, a certain percentage. It's a strategic asset in that it's it's all that the country has. If you look at Zimbabwe, our economy is mining buyers. We cannot afford to let uh, foreigners just come and grab everything in that sector. Right. Uh, so I, I, I wouldn't think uh, it's a wise strategy to uh, exclusively give foreigners everything. Yeah, we, 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 I, I think 100% is too much. Yes, so if you look at most of, uh, basically most of the Arab nation, strategic, uh, strategic areas such as, uh, such as uh, exploration of oil, they always have a reservation to a certain extent of uh, uh, locals or the, the government itself owning a bigger share. But there are certain sectors which you need to, 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 to uh, enforce tax exemptions, uh, uh, what we call it uh, economic free zones. It's, okay. it's everywhere. You have to create those hubs where people can come and invest, say Vic Falls 
you let people come and build hotels tax free and so forth you that that way you 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 drive growth but for a resource which which is bound to extinguish to 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 be extinct in a certain uh, at, over a certain period you definitely can't afford to give it all to, okay. to a foreigner well still on the same trip by uh, professor mtuling ngobe this is a tweet where he, where he says that he met with the chief of uh, of the international monetary fund to, prov- to, to as it says to provide an update on the progress of zimbabwe do you think any positives would come out of this i think it's a basically a good gesture uh, updating the key players in the in the, in the finance uh, world and uh, as you know uh, imf is the biggest player in that uh, in that space followed by World Bank among some other Paris uh, league uh, clubs but um we can we we are not in a position as yet to access funds from IMF although we cleared uh, the areas uh, IMF uh, areas using our special drawing rights we are not a- entitled as, as it yet to uh, to access funding from that bank so i think it's a positive in that uh, it shows engagement it's part of uh, the re-engagement stance by the uh, current uh, government which which i believe is positive and uh, you need those remarks that that feedback and you also need to take notes because when you engage those uh, institutions they will also give you a feedback in terms of what they think about your policies of course there's a task force which is basically uh, set up to deal with zimbabwe but at the present moment i think uh, what he has done is a, is, a, is a good gesture of course we are not likely to get any uh, cash outflow from uh, cash inflow from uh, these institutions as yet. Okay. Um then on to another one another story very quickly um delayed uh, results from TSL perhaps giving us um, a hint of what we could expect in the reporting season that you know um as is now at hand. What could be the 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 the, the importance or the significance of of such a trend that could possibly hit the market? uh it might not be much but uh, it it definitely uh it might scare off the market a bit because it's important for investors to be getting information as and when uh the it's information needed. is uh, in the information is due in other markets 3 months is a, is a is a very long time and you find that in in the united states they do provide quarterly reports even down south they provide quarterly reports it ensures that investors have got the right information, information to make decisions at their disposal so i think uh the more time we have before results are announced the more likely it is that you are making an an uninformed uninformed decision on on your investment you need to take positions based on the latest information and if that information comes after a certain uh, uh a period i mean beyond a certain uh, stipulated period then it becomes a challenge so according to the zsc year end financials are supposed to uh, the reporting season is supposed to start january to march that is within 3 months so for the year ending december or the half year ending december of the of 2018 companies should start reporting now so for those with the year november year end like tsl Uh, already they've uh, uh, gone beyond february which means they are already due because you only have got 3 months but in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the delay what has inspired the delay is that uh, you you have got a certain reporting standard which uh, says the reported currency have to be outlined first so if the reported currency is usd the public uh, accountants and auditors board has to uh, justify or they have to put forward to say the reporting currency as of 2018 was usd they have to put it uh, in they have to put it in black and white that that was the reported currency for all listed companies and so forth so right now there is yet to be that announcement or that uh, promulgation by the by the board to say we accept what the monetary policy statement said this is how you have to progress in terms of your accounting you have to report in either uh, rtgs dollar or you report in us dollar that has got a huge impact why because there is now an exchange rate so it's important to figure out whether your your financials are reported in usd 
or in, in, in RTGS. Oh, it would be interesting to see how that actually turns out. Well, thank you, respect. Up next is Special Focus. Good evening, Anis, and welcome to the show. Hi, Evan. How are you doing today? Uh, can't complain. Can only get better. Yourself? As always. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's get on to business. Today, um, the World Platinum Investment Council released fourth quarterly report mm -hmm. uh, for the year 2018. And yes. uh, Zimbabwe's production for the year 2018 dipped 2% to 480,000. But before you can perhaps uh, expound on the subject, let's have a quick look at how Zimbabwe has been performing in terms of platinum production yes. over the past years. Coming from 2005, we produced 155,000 ounces of platinum. Mm -hmm. 2010, um, 280, um, scaling to 314, 2011, 2013, 405. We reached our peak in 2016, producing 490,000 ounces mm -hmm. um, of platinum in that sense. Mm -hmm. 2017, 480, uh, and uh, 2017, 480, 2018. 470,000 yes. ounces of yes. uh, platinum. It's been, I think it's, it's quite an encouraging trend from 2005 uh, yes, yes, right up to 2016. Uh, you, you would notice that, uh, I mean, in Zimbabwe, you have about three major platinum players. You've got your Zimplats, your Mimosa Mines, and your Unki Mine. Uh, if you look at the history of all, of all these mines, you'll find that Unki Mine no, actually commenced its mining around 2009, 2010, which is why you also see a, an, an uptick really, which was very encouraging around this time because these guys uh, are now producing about 60 to 70,000 ounces uh, of, 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 of platinum ore. And then if we, if we just scale back a little bit into your early 2000s, late 90s, uh, Mimosa was already, was already mining some of the platinum in Zimbabwe. But then it has it hadn't come to a place where it was uh, producing as much as hundred thousand ounces that they are that they are currently producing an excess of hundred thousand ounces. Now at that time, your the, their major their major shareholders' implants were not in 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 in, uh, in the in the matrix. Uh, so as time went on, a, l a little bit of uh, problems in terms of. How to mine and, and and other problems that they were facing, which more which were more like technical issues, really did them have trading at about thirty thousand ounces back in the late nineties, uh, early nineties there about. But then as they came into the new millennium, things started to pan out as well as Zimplas then came into the in, into the picture, okay. where they also where they also are trading. Uh, around about an excess of about 200 250,000 ounces currently so you would find that as as these mines grew in terms of their in, in terms of their stature so did our mining production levels in, ter in terms of the nation Zimbabwe now when when things did really start going up we started producing as much as 470 but then it's it's sad to say that we're still mining as low such a low number because yeah. we are mm -hmm. the second largest. Uh, we have the second largest deposit of of of, of, of platinum, platinum in yes. the world. My yes. concern though would be that decline there. It seems mm -hmm. as though we are getting more investment now. Um, plats, uh, implants, and, and well, well, like, well, that's pretty much in line with with the with the world's trend right now because the world trend also actually scaled back about five percent, if I'm not mistaken. Um, You'll find that South Africa had a couple of issues to do with their, their with with their uh, with their industrial with industrial actions, and also there there were a little bit of uh, um, mining technicalities that they had to go through. You'll also find that in America, also in in Russia, there were a couple of mining technicalities that yeah, they um, had to face. Especially in the fourth quarter for Zimbabwe, we had a fourteen percent decline. Yes, yes, yes. Which which is not very much worrying uh, because these 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 are just technicalities that these guys could really iron out and find out a better solution for them to actually come out uh, stronger in the in the following quarter. So I'm not really worried with the decline as as yet. Uh, if it then continues on a quarter on quarter basis and we we do come off again next in in the in in, in the following year. It, it will be very much of a worrying trend for me. 
Okay, um, moving on to, I know we've got other stats. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the contribution um, of the fourth quarter by mm-hmm. Zimbabwe mm-hmm. against the performance of other countries. South Africa um, um, producing 74%, Russia mm-hmm. 9%. Which is where my, my worry was, because you see, we're the second largest, but then we've got uh, Russia and America beating us to... the to, to uh, uh, Russia yeah, actually Russia. beating us to the kind of contribution that we have in the, in the fourth quarter, yes, uh, we did have a 14% decline. Uh, maybe our decline wasn't as harsh as Russia's decline, but then we should be doing better numbers uh, because than Russia. Uh, than Russia, because Russia is producing about 600, 700 uh, thousand. Uh, so we should be somewhere over here. Yeah, we, 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 should, we should be have, getting a significant slice. We should, yeah, we should be getting a significant slice. I mean, South Africa, 74%, that's a huge number. And these guys are, are doing millions, of, uh, millions, millions in, in, terms of their, in terms of their production numbers. So if, if, if we're doing just 100,000 kind of production numbers, we, sh- we should really be pushing in on our, on our production levels, more investment, uh, make, sure that, make sure that we do scale up our numbers. Yes, there, is, there, there has been some uh, talk about... Uh, Mimosa actually scaling up their uh, scaling up their production numbers, but then that only comes later in in around about 2020, 21, 22 there about, uh, which is pretty much coming in from from their parent company. One of their parent companies, Implants, which owns about fifty percent of of Mimosa, they are looking to scale up those those production numbers for them to actually capture more on the Palladium side. But then uh, that should also still push up. Our, our platinum numbers because these these minerals do move hand in hand because that's why it's called platinum group metals. <laughs> yes. Okay, global refined production. I think mm-hmm. this one is an interesting one because this is dealing with the refined um, production. Yes, on a quarter on quarter basis, you'd find that uh, in 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 Q one of twenty eighteen, Zimbabwe had a slightly thinner uh, production rate there about. Uh, but then it, it did improve in Q Q two of twenty eighteen significantly in Q three and, and yes so it, it our production numbers were going up it shows that there's some seriousness in terms of in terms of actually pushing numbers uh, in terms of production uh, there's more investment ca- happening but then the technical technicalities that our Zimbabwean mines actually faced uh, in the in the last quarter of twenty eighteen. Uh, then reduce that that contribution there about so it, it's it's a fair assessment of of how we've been performing currently uh, we, we, with 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 increased production happening but uh, q4 was a little bit uh, uh, disheartening now you you would also notice that even back in q4 2017 we had a slightly larger number there but then there's a lot of work in progress that was that had contributed in in on the Q4 2017 production numbers there. Okay, now let's talk about the the, the, the mineral itself, platinum. Mm-hmm. Um, of of note is that the price has been so much under pressure mm-hmm. um, over the past few years, um, coming from 2015 when there was that scandal with uh, Volkswagen, um, mm-hmm. the German vehicle manufacturer, mm-hmm. them having to recall several of their vehicles. And mm-hmm. since then, you know, it's, it's been a bit, a bit shaky, and now the pressure continues to be on now, and now the World Platinum Investment Council expects a decline um, in terms of the demand for the mineral resource to about 3% in the year 2019. What could that spell for the producers across the board? Well, in line with the uh, sustainable development goals, you would find that uh, Europe, which is, which was actually one of the major areas that uh, the minerals needed for the for the auto industry, where you would find that uh, in the auto industry there there's a there's much to do with with uh, auto catalytic uh, catalytic converters. Uh, so now with auto catalytic converters coming in on the diesel side of auto industry. Uh, the, the SDGs have put a lot of pressure on the mineral. Why? Because Europe has come to a place where they're actually scaling down the number of diesel vehicles that are actually being produced uh, at the current rate. Uh, also, we would find that in, industrially, uh, the mineral 
still has a little bit of support in terms of medical medical uh, equipment that is needed because it is somewhat of a pure uh, of a pure uh, of 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 a pure mineral for it, for them to use in that respect. Okay. Uh, we can and it's also a little bit cheaper. We can also look at. Uh, the jewelry industry now. The jewelry industry is another area that uh, platinum has a lot of um, demand coming from. But then that industry has been also scaling back because of because of other minerals that have been coming into play, and also it being a Talk, talking about other minerals now that palladium seems to be growing. Is it not more advisable for platinum miners to perhaps concentrate on palladium? Because palladium has been an upward trend, quite an interesting one. I, I'm sure we discussed it the other day. Yes, we did. That's much to do with, with the supply deficit that has been there, and 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 now the supply deficit has really pushed the number their price up. Uh, it it is advisable, which is which is the move that Implant has actually uh, taken taken take, taken heed of. Uh, they are planning to actually scale up and open another mine by 2022. Uh, that focuses mainly on palladium, so it is it is it is critical for for PGM miners for them to actually start thinking and uh, putting projections toward toward producing more of palladium uh, rather than platinum because of the pressure that that the mineral has been receiving. Uh, much to do with 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 the HDG goals that have really have really put pressure on a lot of uh, what do you call it clean cleaner energies being used. Which moves into electrical vehicles, and uh, that would mean less less combustive vehicles that are are used. Yeah, because I know that Implants is working at investing in a mine for 2022. But yes, yes, th th that's enough for, for for the PGMs for tonight. Can you mm. take us through the stock markets? Right, uh, the stock market had a good turn today, uh, uh, taking a breather from about a two-day run of losses. Uh, all share index and industrials index moving to each other, coming up one zero point one eight percent for both of these uh, indices to actually settle at one hundred forty five point zero one and for one hundred eighty three point five nine uh, points. Uh, the mining index was stable. Uh, the top ten index also added about point five nine percent for it to settle at 142.49 points. Now, top 10 index was pretty much the biggest reason why the stock market actually went up because you'd find out that uh, of the 10 to top 10 stocks, uh, three were risers and two were laggards. Uh, the rest were pretty much stable. Uh, the risers were old mutual, which added another 7.18% uh, for it to settle at 7526 since uh, while BAT and Cassava also added about two, uh, 0 0.15 percent and 2.57 percent uh, for these to trade a little bit stronger today. Now uh, you notice that on a five-day trend, there 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 is a, a decline, which is what I mentioned earlier on that the stock market did come off from a two-day run of losses. Uh, you would find that from uh, from Friday's trade of 148.42 on the on the all share index, it did come off to 146 and then 144.75 on Monday and Tuesday. Now today it settled at 145.01, which makes the five day trend a little bit weaker on a 2.09 percent uh, percentage uh, comparison. Also, was the all industrials index uh, on the week 2.17 percent, while the mining index still is firm. At 2.98%. Uh, now, if we just look at our rises and fallers, uh, you'll find that uh, CBZ and Fidelity were the lead, were leading a, a pack of about six rises, while we had eight fallers on the stock market. Uh, among the six and eight, six rises and the eight fallers, there was a remainder of about uh, ten that. Uh, no, actually, there was a limit of eight stocks that stay sailed stable, uh, where you would find that Hippo was the weakest performing stock counter of the day, uh, leading up about nine point four two percent for it to sell at one hundred twenty five cents. Now you'd f you'd come to a question where you'd find that the stock market did perform a little bit better today, but that that is I'd I'd like to suggest and think that that has much to do with how the power market in terms of the foreign currency market has performed today. Today 
it did weaken a little bit as it came to about 3.5, coming from a 3.4 uh, position uh, on the pri on a prior day. So this would make it a little bit more favorable for investors to trade their money on the stock market rather than on an RTGS market where they could really uh, where they were gaining a little bit more when 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 the rate was a little bit firmer so with with the rate uh, actually having a sustained increase i could suggest that probably uh, investors may start coming back to the to 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 the stock market and trade a little bit more in that in that in that market albeit uh the the barrel market actually weakening as as time goes forward well, um, that's about it for tonight. Thank you, Anis. Thank you, viewers, for staying with us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and to visit our website, www.equityaccess.net. From Anis and I, Danki, and good evening.